Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the DCM Sri Ram Limited Q4 FI24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Rangnekar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rayo. Good afternoon and welcome to DCM Sri Ram Limited's Quarter 4 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. Today we have with us Mr. Ajay Sri Ram, Chairman and Senior Managing Director, Mr. Ajit Sri Ram, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Aditya Sri Ram, Deputy Managing Director, and Mr. Amit Agarwal, Group CFO of the company. We shall commence with remarks from Mr. Ajay Sri Ram and Mr. Ajit Sri Ram. Members of the audience will get an opportunity to post their queries to the management following these comments during the interactive question and answer session. Before we commence, please note that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature, and a note to that effect has been included in the conference call invitation uh, that has been circulated earlier. I would now like to invite Mr. Ajay Shriram to give us a brief overview. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Siddharth. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking our time to join us for our earnings conference call for Q4 and financial year 2024. I will commence with thoughts on business and industry dynamics, and then Ajit will share the perspective on our financial performance. The various global events over the last couple of years have made us believe that the uncertain economic environment is here to stay in the medium term. This uncertainty will continue to emanate from geopolitics, climate change, and global health hazards. Developing financial and operational resilience in business is the only way to sustain such challenges. In response to these uncertainties, we have taken steps to make our business more resilient to industry cycle. We have taken measures towards scale, forward integration, diversification, continuous, continuous focus on cost efficiency, along with a strong balance sheet led by prudent financial principles to prepare ourselves for such eventualities. Sustainability is a focus area for our business, and we strive to act consciously to take strategic initiatives to achieve sustainability across our business operations. In addition to the work in the sphere of water conservation, energy conservation, green, green energy, and circular economy, we are working towards newer ideas in above areas that can lead to a quantum improvement in carbon footprint and water efficiency. Over the last one year, we have tied up with 300 crores towards sustainability-linked loans, which demonstrates our commitment towards the environment. Our financial performance for the quarter and year ended March 31st, 2024, has been in line with our expectations, with chlorovenyl segment under pressure due to disproportionate capacity addition compared to demand growth in the chloralkali sector and excess global supply in the vinyl sector. Sugar and ethanol business performed better, and Sita Farm Solutions and Finesta Business Systems continued the growth trajectory. With our committed CapEx getting commissioned during the first half of financial year 25, the quality of our performance will see improvement. I will now turn the discussion on key industry dynamics across our various business. First, I will talk about the chemical industry. Global chloroalkyl uh, prices uh, showed some improvement following short supplies owing to maintenance shutdown in US, logistics issues in the Red Sea, and uptick in demand from consuming industries, mainly aluminium. China continues to struggle with the slowing economy and hence continues to export more. Domestically, the demand has stayed healthy with pickup in the downstream activity. However, given the surplus capacities in the region, the pricing is expected to remain under pressure. There has been a movement in cost structure and is expected to improve further in the 120 megawatt power plant getting commissioned shortly. Despite this, 
the margins are suboptimal. On the project front, I'm happy to share that 850 ton per day cost of food extension has been commissioned and this will add significant economies of scale to our business in the medium term. Hydrogen peroxide plant is also in advanced stages of commissioning and will be will commence operation within the next two months. I mean, 20 megawatt plant has been on trial runs for the last few months and reached up to 70% of its installed capacity. However, it is also some technical issues at higher capacities, which has now been corrected and expected to recommence by end of July, end of June, early July 2024. Ethical hygiene project commissioning activities will take a little more time and it will be commissioned in Q2 financial year 25. These initiatives have been strategically planned to augment the business growth and contribute to healthy performance. Second is demand. Global demand for PVC has stayed subdued, given muted downstream demand and this has led to softer prices. We expect this scenario to continue as interest rate cuts are expected to be slower than expected. India PVC demand continues to be strong in line with GDP growth, although the prices were lower owing to lower cost inputs, lower cost imports from China. Our business team has worked to keep the input cost under check with use of different energy mix. This has also been supported by reduction in energy prices. Sugar. Global sugar supply and demand is expected to be marginally surplus owing to favorable weather conditions and uptick in production in Brazil. Global sugar prices continue to be strong and was trading about $550 per ton. Domestic sugar prices remain insulated from global prices led by trade restrictions and were trading much lower. Domestic sugar prices should improve given the increase in cost of production due to increase in sugarcane prices, which has not yet been compensated. Central government has further increased the FRP for the upcoming sugar season 24-25 by Rs. 25 per quintal. SAP has also been increased by Rs. 20 per quintal in the sugar season 23-24. Indian sugar production is expected to be down by 0.8 million metric tons to 32 million metric tons in sugar season 23-24. With exports not being allowed, the uh, season end inventory is likely to be about 8 million metric tons, that is equivalent to three months consumption. Domestic demand is also showing good growth with the consumption now at around 29 million metric tons. Moving to ethanol, the government has targeted a blending of 15% for the current year. Government of India has limited diversion of sugar, has limited the diversion of sugar to ethanol in the form of bee heavy molasses and syrup during the season to 1.7 million metric tons which was recently revised to 2.5 million metric tons and also then discontinued FCI surplus rice and wheat stock for ethanol production in June last year. Further, in, in Uttar Pradesh, sugar mills continue to face the burden of country liquor policy, which is detrimental to the central government ethanol blending policy and the state sugar industry. Due to these factors, lending targets of 15% looks challenging this year. There is a need for a consistent policy from both the center and the state government. Sugar season 23-24 is nearing the end and central and western of the Pradesh has witnessed lower sugarcane crush, led by extreme weather, higher diversion for Kansari including good and red dot issues with sugarcane variety COJ CO is 238. Our units also ended the season with a lower crush of 579 lakh quintals and lower recovery at 11% on final molasses. This along with the increase in LCP has led to higher costs for the season. Our business team is working to ensure the right variety balance and agronomy practices to ensure healthy crush in the coming season. The business has started production of sulfate of potash, 
using the silvery ash to a wholly own subsidiary. Our project at Loni, the sugar capacity expansion, and at Agwapur with respect to CBG are progressing as per schedule. Panesta. Panesta continues to deliver a strong performance supported by volume and value growth in both projects and retail uh, categories. Order booking remains firm and we close the year with over 1,000 crores in order booking. A combination of wider assortment of SKUs, new product lines, and enhanced footprint has allowed us to sustain this growth. Moving on, the agribusiness portfolio comprises of Shira Farm Solutions, fertilizer, and the bioseed business. First on Shira Farm Solutions. SFS continued to strengthen its leadership position in research weeks. The year saw healthy growth on the back of enhanced contribution from all the verticals, seeds, crop protection, and specialty plant nutrients. Leveraging social media and digital tools enhanced our demand generation and sales promotion efforts. Our newly operational manufacturing facility at Kota is one of our 100% in one of our 100% subsidiary companies for production of high quality speciality nutrition products will enable stable supply chain operations. Our focus on new technologies and new products will help in maintaining this level of momentum. The investment being made in manufacturing setups as well as planned geographic expansion will assist in growing as we go forward. Suppliers, the media business environment continues to be stable. Our business performance in the current year has been impacted by two, for two reasons. First, the lower gas price, which is a path through, led to lower revenues and lower earnings. And second, the energy norms have been revised lower. We have taken a maintenance shutdown in March 2024 and are restarted in early April. We continuously focus on improving energy consumption. The government has allocated reasonable amount for urea subsidy in the budget for the current year, and we expect the subsidy outstanding to be at reasonable level. Bioseed. Bioseed in their business performance has improved, and it turned positive in financial year 24. New and superior performing hybrids introduced in the previous and current financial year are being received well by farmers in key target markets of corn, cotton, and paddy in India. However, there are production constraints in India, leading to delay in scale-up of the business. We believe that a future pipeline across the various verticals will help us in the business in the medium term. I will now request Ajit to cover the financial performance of the, of the company. Ajit. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will now highlight the business performance for Q4. The net revenues, net of excise duty in this quarter were, uh, 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 was at rupees 2,399 crores as compared to 2,720 crores in the previous year, a decline of 12% of year on year. The decline in revenues is mainly driven by subdued prices and lower volumes in the chlorovinyl segment. Accordingly, PBDIT stood at rupees 289 crores which is down by 22%. Chlorovinyl. The revenue in the chlorovinyl segment declined by 29%, plus, uh, 25% to 691 crores, and PBDIT was at 64 crores as against 175 crores last year. Chloratically, business revenue was down 28% year on year, and PBDIT was also down 71% due to lower ECU that declined 30%. Volumes were also slightly down by 6% in the current quarter. However, this impact was partially compensated by energy prices that have reduced due to lower coal costs and the commissioning of, 50, of 43 megawatts of renewable energy. Vinyl business revenue declined by 8% year on year at Rs. 153 crores and PBDIT was at Rs. 14 crores versus Rupees 1 crore last year. PVC prices were down 15% year on year 
and carbide prices were down 17% year on year. However, input costs reduced during the quarter versus last year and sequentially. Sugar. Sugar business revenue net of excise duty was down 6% to 879 crores. Sugar exports were nil due to government policy as against 3.3 lakh quintals last year. PBDIT has increased by 11% year on year to 236 crores on account of better prices of domestic sugar and volumes in the treasury. Domestic sugar prices were at rupees 3857 per quintal, an increase of 10% year on year. Ethanol volumes were higher by 7% at 375 lakh uh, liters owing to the commissioning of the 120 KL, KLD multi feed distillery. Finestra Building Systems. Finestra Building Systems has reported a growth of 31% year on year in revenues to rupees 209 crores and PVDIT has increased from rupees 34 crores to 44 crores. The increase is driven both by volumes and prices. Audio book was up 21% year on year and has crossed rupees 1000 crores mark. Shina Farm Solutions. This quarter is an off season for the business and the revenues and PVDIT were in line with last year. Fertilizers. Fertilizer revenue declined by 17% year on year to rupees 354 crores driven by lower gas prices, which is a fast food. Volumes were also lower by 12% year on year due to uh, the maintenance shutdown taken in March 2024. Outstanding fertilizer subsidy this year was lower at, 90, at rupees 90 crores. However, it is expected to inch up over the period but will remain at reasonable levels. Bioseeds. Bioseed revenue is lower by 12%. However, Q4 is an off season. PBDIT improved from negative rupees 25 crores to negative rupees 8 crores during the period. Coming to the highlights of, of financial year 24. FY24 net revenues, net of excise duty was down 5% year on year at rupees 10,922 crores and PVDIT down 37% year on year at rupees 1089 crores. We expect the performance to improve in the coming year. Notable aspect of, of, of performance during the year was the significant pressure on the profitability of the chlorovinyl business, uh, which was mitigated by performance of the other businesses. Sugar and ethanol business witnessed a 64% increase in PBDIT led by higher volumes and prices. Finestra and SFS PBDIT grew by 20 and 21% respectively, driven by volumes. Biosync business turned around to become PBDIT positive during the year. Capital employed in the chlorovinyl and sugar business has increased significantly on account of the ongoing capital expenditure and working capital requirement respectively. Further, fertilizer business saw considerable reduction in the, in the capital employed driven by lower subsidy outstanding. With healthy cash flows, sorry, with healthy cash flows across our businesses, our, debate, our debt remained at comfortable levels despite the continuing capex. Our net debt as on 31st March 24 is at 1434 crores versus 681 crores on March 31, 2023. Return on capital employed for March 24 came in at 14% as, uh, as against 27% in the last financial year, mainly due to lower PBIT levels as compared to last year due to the reasons explained earlier. The board has recommended a final dividend of 130% amounting to rupees 40.54 crores in this board meeting. The total dividend for the year is at 330% amounting to rupees 102.92 crores. Notwithstanding the macroeconomic concerns, all our businesses except chlorovinyl and fertilizers have grown at double digits. That concludes my opening remarks and I would like to request the moderator 
to please open the forum for, for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Jainam Gilani from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. So, Hi. as you mentioned in the presentation, the caustic soda import prices have risen by almost 15 to 20 percent quarter over quarter, but there was no major difference in the ECU realizations for us. So, what was the reason for the same, sir? So, um, uh, global, global prices uh, are different in different regions of the world. Uh, one of the important factors actually for India, especially Western India, uh, where our capacity gets impacted, uh, is the imports from Iran. And from Iran, the imports are coming at, at lower prices. That has an implication on the pricing uh, in the Western market. It is linked associated with that. And I would just like to add here that uh, given that uh, in uh, domestic market there is surplus capacity, so as a result of it, even if you know the international prices are better, there will be an impact on domestic prices. They may not follow the similar trend. Okay. And uh, so, what is the peak debt that we are planning to take, and what is our cost of debt? Pardon me. Could you kindly repeat that? Uh, so, what is the peak debt levels that we plan to take, and what is the current cost of debt for us? So, the current cost of debt, uh, blended short term, long term, is uh, around 7.5 percent. And uh, see, debt level will be governed by the cash flow and the next year plan. So, but still, as you mentioned, that we would like to maintain our debt to a bitter level. That's what our financial prudence principle is. It should be in the range of around 1.5x to 2x. Okay. And uh, so once our additional capacity comes in for caustic, how do we plan to dispose of the additional chlorine that would be coming from it? Uh, so for chlorine, actually, we have a, a multi-pronged strategy. Uh, one is, of course, we are putting chlorine downstream capacities ourselves. So that would be captive chlorine consumption. Uh, second is, uh, at least in our Barut site, we have a very uh, long-standing relationships with uh, with our customers, and uh, so they consume a pipeline chlorine from us, and that's been the backbone for us. And they are also increasing their uh, capacity uh, going forward. So that a large part of the chlorine will also be consumed along with our pipeline customers. And over time, we expect the market to grow steadily as well. So we foresee that in the coming uh, coming year, coming uh, and, and beyond, the chlorine consumption will will increase. That way. So, sir, currently, if we consider we almost consume forty percent of our chlorine captively. So, post to expansion, what will be the total chlorine consumption? Uh, yeah, so, see, uh, at Baruj, which is the largest site, now it's at uh, 2,225 tons per day. See, there the uh, current is uh, a little bit good this way, post expansion and everything that comes up in terms of epichloride green. Our captive consumption will be about 15%. Further, if we add the, uh, as, as Aditya mentioned, if we add the uh, pipeline supplies, that's about 40%. So about 55 to 60 percent, uh, we have already market in terms of almost like virtually captive consumption, and the rest uh, it will be uh, market. But there also we are looking at certain tie-ups, and multi-pronged strategy is there to see that uh, we increase our uh, chlorine disposal. And sir, in your initial remarks, you indicated about the higher import coming from the Iran and the caustic. So. If you look in the month of April and May, what was the import situation and what is the ECU 
as compared to the aggregate of the Q4 numbers? Can you repeat your question, please? And be very louder, please. I just wanted to understand, as you indicated, that uh, it's a huge pressure coming in from the import in terms of the cost take and the subdued demand. So, just wanted to understand that given the exit price of the ECU in month of March, what, are, what is the current situation in month of April and May? Yeah. So, the current ECUs uh, at, uh, in the Western market is in the range of around ECU around the range of 28,000. Okay, sir. So thank you. That's all from my side. If I have further questions, we'll come back in a queue. All, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Nirav Jamodia from Anvil Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So just wanted Hi. to yeah. So just wanted to understand your thought process on the chlorine. So if you can just walk us through in terms of uh, what are the feedbacks you are receiving from the customers in terms of improvement in their existing capacity utilization where chlorine is used and you mentioned about uh, the expansions also which have been carried down by your customers there so how do you see the schedule of or some understanding about the improvement in the chlorine demand because i think our ecu portion is largely impacted by uh, the chlorine part and hence for the utilization on the caustic part also so if you can just give us some sense on the customer side in terms of the feedbacks what you have been receiving that would be very helpful sure so actually uh, in in the last past year or so there has been uh, uh, there has been some subdued demand in some verticals especially agrochemicals and other related uh, related industries but the way we are seeing it is that uh, a lot of our customers are also expanding their capacities anticipating the demand increase in the coming quarter so along with our capacity increase, a lot of our customers are also increasing their capacity, which will consume our chlorine. So we expect that in the short term, uh, yes, there's a lot of caustic capacity that has come in. But in the medium term and long term, we expect uh, you know, a robust growth uh, sort of aligned with the GDP growth. So we are very optimistic in the medium to long term. Correct. And sir, are you seeing any pockets in terms of the consuming industries where the demand for chlorine is picking up? Uh, apart from the agrochemicals? Yes, aluminium will be the other segment where India is seeing capacity additions. So that's the other segment uh, where uh, the demand uh, uh, is picking up. But that's for, for uh, uh, caustic. Yeah. But in, in uh, chlorine, uh, I think it will largely be, uh, you know, as overall texture picks up in textiles, we'll also see dyes and chemicals picking up. I think uh, over the period, the demand should pick up. Got it. And sir, is there any benchmark on which you work upon, let's say, when before two years, when the textile was doing good, agrochemicals had a good uh, pickup in terms of the demand. Uh, how, much, uh, how much fall in the demand for chlorine possibly you have witnessed over the last two years, which is justifying the current uh, suppressing capacity utilization for caustic soda too? So is there is there any is there any benchmark? Let's say before two years we were at 100% for the chlorine consumption for these two sectors. How much they have fallen over last two years? Uh, is is there any benchmark which you have done, sir? I, I, well, I think I think you know I put it this way. Compared to two years ago, and if we are saying 100% or whatever capacity industry was running at, in the last two years a lot of capacity addition has happened. Okay. which has made the chlorine availability much larger than what it was two years ago. Okay. So I think, you know, and I think the optimism of all of us on the Indian economy, growing at 7, 7.5% in the next many years, few years anyway, I think we are bullish on the Indian economy and any commodity product which uh, compared to two years ago when the prices were very healthy, that's a new addition that come in. It will take a couple of years for the prices to stabilize, demand to match out, and then we'll come back to a sound position once again of the chlor chloralkali industry. So I think we are optimistic overall, not only on uh, uh, chlorine consumption, but even on caustic consumption, to get a reasonable, satisfactory ECU in the medium term. Mm -hmm. Got it, sir. 
so second question is on the website so if i recall uh, few of the conference call you have mentioned that uh, our contribution to sales and ebitda uh, in the caustic soda business from web was close to 18 to 20% uh, so how how has been in fy24 in terms of the contribution both in terms of uh, sales as well as uh, operating profit or pbit whatever you can give us sir uh value sorry can you just repeat that are you talking about value added products yeah yeah value added products including the hydrogen part if if, if i'm not wrong sir so if i look at this year uh, hydrogen uh, would have added almost uh, 60 to 70% of the total earnings total ebitda okay okay and and uh, rest could be divided between uh, poly aluminum chloride sbp and other value added products which we may be manufacturing uh, yeah i mean i would say largely uh, caustic soda would be the uh, largest craft of this others are more in terms of consuming chlorine so that they can help the capacity utilization of uh, caustic but however sbp is picking up in last six months we have seen good traction in sbp what it so Uh, is it safe to believe that whatever PBIT we have reported, close to 60% is contributed by hydrogen? Yes, got it. So last question is on uh, the hydrogen part. So uh, with this expansion, the excess hydrogen will be producing out. So some would be consumed in the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, uh, rest of the hydrogen are we planning to sell in the domestic market, or we'll be using for our captive caustic flaker plant? Oh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, again like with chlorine i think we have the advantage of having strong partners and uh, pipeline customers for hydrogen as well so over time we expect uh, the demand for hydrogen through pipeline also to increase we also sell hydrogen through banks uh, in in the markets uh, around our uh, units uh, and of course we will be adding value ourselves as you mentioned also uh, through hydrogen peroxide Uh, so we have multiple multiple uh, uh, avenues through which hydrogen uh, will get value to hydrogen and it is an important uh, stream for us as well got it what will be the total flow flaker capacity now after this uh, addition of uh, 850 tpd of capacity at paruch so we are expanding by another 600 tpd for flaker okay so the uh, that's one and the two So total will be close to 900 TPD at at Baruch at Baruch and then 900 TPD. 900 TPD. Yeah. TPD, right? Sir? 900 TPD at Baruch and 200 plus TPD at our Kota site. Got it, sir. Got it. Thank you so much, sir, for answering the questions and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, so my first question is on the uh, uh, industry front so you mentioned that uh, there has been a capacity addition which has happened so what is the current uh, domestic uh, chloralkali capacity uh, what are the utilization rates and uh, i guess that uh, there is one more conglomerate who is going to put up uh, chloralkali capacity in near future so how do you look at the uh, overall uh, demand supply equation and given that the capacities or supplies will be higher uh, will the ecus remain uh, benign at least uh, for the near to medium term so your thought on this thank you yeah so one uh, the current uh, capacity the uh, caustic soda capacity in the country is about 5.6 million tons and uh, the overall production is about 4.5 million tons so that comes to about uh, 80% is the capacity utilization in the country however we are close to about 90% uh, so that is one uh, what was the next question uh, so new capacities are also coming up like uh, we have recently you know put up this 850000 then there is uh, another conglomerate who is also putting up uh, 2200000 uh, tons of capacity yeah, yeah. so the total capacity should uh, go up to to by another uh, 0.5 to 1 million ton that should get added over next one year so it depends you know from one our capacity is already added and uh, it all will all depend how their plans go but ballpark is 0.5 to 1 million ton getting added 
Right. So the ECU environment will remain benign in uh, such uh, you know scenario when supplies are higher and demand is growing at a reasonable pace. So actually, we anticipate uh, uh, that that the demand is going to continue to grow. So caustic soda actually can be moved globally. So as the capacities increase in India, the exports from India will also increase. Uh, and so it will be driven to an extent by the global market scenario as well. Of course, the chlorine that gets produced along with the caustic is more of a domestic play because transporting chlorine internationally is not easy. Uh, so therefore, our focus also continues to remain on chlorine utilization. Uh, and we are taking active steps uh, to make that happen. So we expect that in uh, in the medium term, uh, you know, the prices in the short term, prices will remain range bound, and in the medium term, uh, we are bullish on uh, on the demand situation. Sure, sir. Sure, uh, that answers the question. The second question is in terms of the future capital allocation. So whether we are looking at uh, any other sub segments where we want to, um, you know. Uh, do the capex so any adjacencies that we have found similar to what we did in say ECH a uh, couple of years few years ago so are there any other such areas where we are looking at given that uh, in domestic market chloralkali as you say the capacity additions have been happening even in ECH today uh, the capacity is more than uh, the demand so any other areas which we are actively looking at thank you yes so we are continuously exploring new avenues for growth, not only in the chemical business, but across all businesses in the group, uh, barring maybe one or two. So uh, there's a lot of interesting options that are being evaluated, and as the board approves them, uh, of course, that will become uh, public knowledge. Within chemicals itself, uh, one of the areas which, in which the board has approved uh, an in-principle go-ahead is for epoxy, advanced materials in, in the sphere of epoxy. And so that is something which uh, we are working very actively on, and at a suitable time, you know, we will declare that as well. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, and best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ahmed Mada from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I have a few questions. First, on the caustic part. Uh, can you explain what is the reason for increase in cost on quarter on quarter basis compared to Q3? Could you kindly repeat that a little louder, please? So my question is, if I look at the numbers for caustic business compared to Q3 last quarter, why has the cost structure increased? Uh, I, I thought that cost was supposed to improve uh, compared to Q3 and Q4. So is there any specific reason? Yeah, so the the cost structure is improved, but you know if you see in the in the month of uh, January, uh, the prices had you know December January the prices had come off, so that's the reason why overall uh, performance was a little lower than uh, previous quarter. Okay. But otherwise, cost structure is improved. And on the sugar side, um, uh, I have two questions. First, on the prices, do you see the current level of 39, 40 will be sustaining in the next season. Uh, first question. Second question, uh, is it fair to expect that we should do 17 to 18 crore liters of ethanol uh, in next financial year? So, uh, on your first question, uh, in terms of prices, uh, see, the point is, yes, current prices are in the range of 39 to uh, 3,900 to 4,000. Now, given that FRP has increased and even SAP uh, went up uh, in the last season, given that uh, the prices should increase. However, you know, it's very difficult to say given uh, the sensitivity of the commodity. Uh, what was the second question? On the ethanol side, we did, I think, around 16 crore liters this year. Next year, we should be doing 18 crore liters. So, see, our capacity is about 18 crores uh, liters. But it depends on the feedstock, you know, uh, depending if you're using maize, you're using uh, uh, surplus rice, GIV, BIV, all that uh, impacts. But on BIV, let's say, it's about 18 crore liters. Okay. And as of now, how much we are doing ethanol from sugar and how much from non-sugar feedstock? 
so see our capacity on uh, non uh, sugar is about 250 kld out of total about 550 570 kld capacity that we have okay for it but can you tell the based on the production number is it possible uh i can so uh i think the total uh, what we produced in the last financial year the total that we produced from grain was about uh, 6.6 crore liters okay and this will remain the same uh, in the next year as well based on whatever uh, current scenario is so again it will depend how much from maize and how much from uh, surplus right but it should be in this range as i said the capacity is 250 kld and we we operate our distillery to almost 330 days 330 to 340 days is what we try on that this is yeah about 8.2 crore liters is what we can do maximum okay and on the fertilizer part i the cs volume is still like near 1 lakh ton so i don't see issue on the volume part so how much uh, shutdown expenses we have taken on pnl uh, because of fertilizer yeah because of fertilizer i don't have that number uh, right away uh, i must i can probably provide it to you separately i don't have the number right away okay okay got it yeah, that's it so much i think thank you thank you the next question is from the line of riya mehta from equitas investment please go ahead uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity my first question is in terms of cost of sugar please louder please can i request you to please say it little louder hi congratulations for good set of numbers uh, my first question is in regards to the cost of production for sugar for the season yeah yeah so for the season the cost of production is uh, 3590 rupees per quintal okay and what was it last year for fi20 it was uh, about uh, i'll just tell you it was about uh, uh, 3200 approximately 3200 got it also what is the current chlorine cost uh, prices uh, in the range of minus 2000 to minus 2500 Okay, and uh, when we are seeing the increase, incremental capacity addition and caustic, how are we looking for incremental sales of chlorine? Like apart from the capacity addition of our already existing uh, pipeline customers, what other avenues are we looking for? So as as we said earlier as well, uh, it's a multi-pronged uh, strategy that we are doing. One is uh, capital consumption. So we already have uh, capital consumption of chlorine. and we are going to look at uh, newer avenues for uh, consuming chlorine in house as well the second uh, very important for us is our pipeline customers uh, especially in bharuch uh, uh, and they are also growing continuously so uh, we have long standing partnerships with them and that will continue as well and fundamentally we expect the market to grow as well uh, steadily so that will also help in uh, increase of chlorine consumption not at also you mentioned about exports of caustic soda as a for uh, for the opportunity for us so what are the current exports level like yes last year we had good exports number but it had declined so what is the current scenario and where would we export if we are exporting so the uh, see the export numbers have not declined for the full year if you look at last year we were about 4.25 lakh metric tons This year also it's uh, around the same level, little higher, 4.39. Uh, what I'm saying is imports have gone up from about 1.4 last year to 2.4 lakh metric tons. Got it. Uh, and where do we export primarily? It's uh, it's fairly global depending on the market situation. Uh, and exports happen in the form of caustic soda lye and caustic soda flakes. So, got it and uh, you just said that we are releasing a flaker capacity so where are we there seeing the demand for flaker is it entirely for exports no, so not entirely it will be again both uh, for domestic market as well as for exports and we continuously evaluate uh, you know where it is that we are getting the best value uh, and and then take decisions accordingly 
got it and uh, overall globally you said there's a lot of imports happening so uh, is there demand slow down globally also and what would be the cause for that so globally uh, yes now the demand is improving we're not seeing uh, demand uh, as as the uh, chairman had mentioned in opening the mass as well that globally demand is improving right uh but of course for us i think uh, you mentioned that in our uh, region specific we are seeing a lot of import happening from iran yes so what led to that like uh, is there surplus uh, capacity addition there or or this lack of demand or other places are more uh, self sufficient what has led to this incremental change so it is a dynamic situation based on the regional uh, demand supply balance or imbalance uh, also based on trade rates based on uh, uh, disruptions uh, like we had in the red sea disruption etc so it's a dynamic situation uh, there are times when we see imports and sometimes from iran they tend to come at a lower price and that impacts the, the domestic market uh, disproportionately uh, but but again with a close to 100 million metric ton global size and the growth of a 1.5 to 2% uh, at a global gdp level so we expect the demand for caustic also to grow so therefore the domestic uh, uh, prices and demand uh, you know which will be balanced by the global uh, growth and demand as well got it got it and even in a domestic sense there is a lot of capacity addition we would see some time till we see further hike in ecus right yeah so it's of course uh, hard to predict the price going forward because there are many factors uh, that get involved but yes you are right that uh, the domestic capacity has increased significantly more than the domestic demand and so in the short term uh, we do see some of those those challenges Uh, which is why we tend to focus back on the cost to get move uh, outside the country right and uh, in terms of ech i was just uh, asking that how uh, since our competitor is currently at around 50 60% capacity utilization how much time will we take to ramp it up and are we planning to export ech as well yeah so it it will it will take some time to ramp up like it does for any new uh, new capacity and it's a new product for us as well but uh, we have strong teams in place and we will expect for domestic consumption and exports uh, uh, there is an approval process uh, for ech with the with the customers largely uh, largely ech goes into the manufacture of epoxy uh, and we have good relationships with a lot of the epoxy customers as well So we expect, uh, you know, positive movement over the coming quarters. Got it. And when do we see entire ramp, uh, ramping up of the capacity? See, it will take about two to three years just to achieve about ninety to hundred percent capacity utilization. Okay. And post our ECU ECH capacity is at around for the next two years. Our chlorine consumption or in uh, captive would increase, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. Namaskar, sir. And thank you to the team uh, for the for a very detailed investor presentation. And we hope for the continuity of the format. Uh, sir, uh, I missed the point on the ECH part. and the uh, epochlorin part of the story if you could just explain once again my line got disconnected the last few statement statement which you made so so what what is the question specifically regarding the the ech uh, contribution going ahead and the epoxy uh, uh, chloride which you mentioned that they will start contributing in a meaningful way uh, so when can we uh, expect that to happen you see uh, in the initial period let's say in the first year of operation uh, for uh, ech and sco2 the ramping up will take time i think the meaningful contribution can happen only let's say uh, in q4 of this year and then full year impact will come in the fy26 okay and uh, we will be commissioning it uh, in the sec- in the first half itself the sco2 and the ecs facility 
See, as mentioned by uh, Chairman in his opening remarks, the hydrogen peroxide should get commissioned in next uh, one to two months, and uh, ECH will get commissioned in Q2. Q2. And sir, the total capex, uh, yes, sir. Pardon me. Uh, okay, and and the total capex we have spent on these two products, sir. Uh, that will be close to about uh, these two crores put together will be in the range of uh, 1100 crores plus minus 100 crores. Okay, so out of the 1700 work in progress, 1100 will get capitalized by uh, Q2 of this financial year. Yes. And the balance amount of the six, uh, odd 600 crores? See, there are projects in other businesses as well. Like in sugar, we mentioned there are uh, CBG and uh, there is a capacity expansion also happening in sugar. And there will be some other projects in other businesses as well. So they all, and there will be some normal capital expenditure as well. So it's submission of all that. Okay. Uh, so when we look at chlorine as the byproduct and, uh, and the evacuation and the utilization of chlorine being the key figure determining the utilization levels for the caustic players, I think the investment in the PVC segment uh, has been due for over uh, ages, if I may use uh, it. And also a lot of big corporates have uh, lined up projects for setting up big PVC projects going ahead in two, three years down the line. So what is the update that we are getting on the PVC? I think the PVC is still uh, imported in the country. There is inherent demand. So what's the thought process and what the pillars on the front of setting a big PVC complex and then this floating dynamics changing uh, completely? Well, I'll put it this way that yes, India imports today almost 60% of the PVC requirements. And uh, based on our cost structure, we actually took a view that we are not looking at investing in PVC expansion right now. Uh, as you are aware, there are two other large groups which are looking at putting up large capacities in PVC. So that's moving in its own direction. We are looking at the more value-add segment now in a more aggressive manner. And we are seeing what more we can do in the value-add chart. Right, sir. So when we look at country as a whole, what is the, 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 the annual chlorine demand and the availability of chlorine with the expanded capacity at 5.6 million tons uh, from uh, from the existing all the existing uh, caustic soda players? Well, chlorine is actually 0.88 percent of uh, caustic production. That's right. So the production uh, that, that is the linkage. What, what, we, what we see is that over the past many years, the capacity utilization at an industry level has been a fairly healthy 85% plus minus uh, kind of range. With a sudden increase in capacity, uh, in the short term, this will reduce, the capacity utilization will reduce, driven to a large extent uh, by chlorine. Uh, but again, as we are saying that in the medium term, we expect the demand is going to uh, be robust. And uh, so we expect that it should come back, the utilization should come back to its levels, uh, which have been there historically. No, sir, suppose we are factoring in an increase in caustic prices also globally. So in that case, uh, we would be able to increase the utilization levels only to the extent chlorine gets consumed. So I, I was just alluding to that fact to, to reach from a say, average 80% to another 90, 94% as have been the averages earlier also. Uh, what what kind of uh, chlorine consumption capacity should be in the annual uh, so that that evacuation happens or how will the metrics work? So, uh, Sakit, as you mentioned, I think there have been multiple questions on this call with respect to chlorine utilization. Right. So, you mentioned that we look at there is a multi plant strategy that we have. I think as the board approves, we will take that up. Our utilization is around 55% post all expansions coming in. We will be having 55% including the pipeline. And we are in, uh, in, in advanced talks you know, for uh, further adding up uh, to this captive consumption. So we'll come back to uh, the shareholders once those plans get firmed up. Sir, so on the debt level numbers, uh, I think the 1400 crore is the net, uh, net debt. Uh, as on 31st March. So this is the peak amount or we, uh, what, what should be the debt number say from for H2? As, uh, for H1 closing for FI 24-25? Uh, for our kind of a company, 
the kind of businesses we are in, the March debt is always the peak debt. Correct. Right. So H1, it will by end of H1, it will be lower, and then it again goes up uh, by end of H2. But take factoring into uh, the current Mr. maturity. Kapoor, yes, uh, I join with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I join with you. Just just understanding currently the current. What are the current maturities lined up? And I just join with you. See, we keep our uh, uh, repayment at least for next uh, one to two years, uh, if I remember correctly. The repayment is in the range of around 100, 150 crores. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we'd like to request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so, just one question. Uh, in our presentation, we have mentioned that uh, we have sanctioned a power cost uh, optimization project uh, with a capex of 120 crores. Uh, what is it exactly, and how will it help? Uh, is it uh, pertaining to the chloralkylate project? So, if you can give. a uh, little more details on the same thank you so we are looking at doing certain modifications in our turbine especially the older turbines now that will improve the efficiency of uh, the power generation thereby reducing the cost so that is something you know we keep uh, looking at uh, innovative ways to reduce our cost because that's something which is in our control so with that objective uh, the board has sanctioned this project sure sir thank you so much Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from Parth Vasani, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, Parth Vasani, you may go ahead with the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I just wanted to uh, know about the Epox plant. So, uh, 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 what is the capacity of it, and by when we are expecting to commission the thing? so uh, that as we mentioned in the past we have an in principle approval from the board uh, we are doing a lot of the technology evaluation detailing out uh, capacities etc and once it is approved by the board we'll be able to share all those details okay any date as such uh, by when we are expecting or that is still yet to be finalized so we expect that in the next uh, uh, couple of quarters uh, Uh, you know, we'll be able to go ahead with uh, you know moving forward with the project after approval is entered. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Shantanu Naik, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. So, uh, uh, thank you for opposing this. So, my question is regarding the. Uh, Shantanu, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we can barely hear you. If you could please speak a little louder. Okay. So uh, my question is regarding Fenestar. So of what of uh, so what percent of total revenues from Fenestar? What would be the percentage share of the project retail and commercial? Come to kindly repeat yourself. Hello, am I audible? Okay. So my question is regarding Fenestar. So of total revenues from Fenestar, what would be the percent share of projects retail and commercial? So, out of the total revenue, about thirty-five uh, percent is projects. The rest is uh, retail. Okay, and uh, and in uh, and with uh, respect to growth, so what kind of growth do we expect in UPVC compared to aluminium? Considering aluminium right now is doing almost twenty percent of total revenue from Panastar, so. So if I got the question right, you are saying uh, the growth of aluminium versus UPVC. Have I understood uh -huh. it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the uh, aluminium actually is growing faster, but it's at a much lower base. So it's definitely growing faster. Put together, we are seeing at least our business growing at almost uh, around 20 percent year on year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, do you see that uh, in medium term, aluminium and UPVC sharing equal equal in percentage of total revenues for Panesta? I I didn't get your question. No, I think frankly, both 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 for Panesta business, it's now been expanded to UPVC windows, aluminium windows. We are into uh, uh, doors. We started facades. 
So we've got to range of products and down the line more things may be added. So we are hoping that the aluminium windows as well as the UPVC windows both grow rapidly. And they both have a separate market segment. So we are focusing on both very aggressively. Okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll have to take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation in our earnings conference call. We are committed to deliver better earnings and growth. Initiatives taken by us to enhance capacities, raise efficiencies, and promote sustainability will begin delivering intended outcomes in the coming years. The commissioning of our new projects in the chemical business will usher in a new era of growth. Further, we continue to evaluate agencies to announce our portfolio in the core area. Thank you once again and wish you all all the very best always. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of DCM Sri Ram Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.